produced by the pancreas. To review, those who develop type 1 diabetes, usually younger Caucasian individuals who have some genetic predisposition to the disease, have destruction of the beta cells of the pancreas, probably as a result of an autoimmune response. Characteristic signs and symptoms of type 1 diabetes include weight loss, polyphagia, polydipsia, polyuria, lack of energy, sleepiness, and blurred vision. Now let's examine type 2 diabetes mellitus, the type Betty Sanborn has. The great majority of individuals with diabetes, 90% or more, have type 2, and about 1 in 3 are not aware that they have the disease. In general, it is more common in individuals over 40, and is especially common in those who are overweight or obese and sedentary. However, there has been a recent epidemic of this so-called adult disease in children. Many believe that type 2 diabetes is now more common in children than type 1. There is a strong genetic predisposition to type 2 diabetes. A large percentage of individuals with type 2 have family members with the disease. The prevalence of type 2 is greater in some ethnic groups than others, African Americans, Native Americans, Latinos, and Pacific Islanders have a much higher incidence of diabetes than Caucasians. Women who have a history of gestational diabetes also have a very high risk of developing type 2 diabetes five to 10 years after the pregnancy, especially if they remain overweight after the pregnancy. Although many people mistakenly believe that type 2 diabetes is a less severe form than type 1, the truth is that both type 1 and type 2 diabetes are chronic, progressive, metabolic illnesses that, if left untreated, may cause serious complications. In the past decade, with an increase in the incidence of people who are overweight and obese, there has been a 30% increase in the prevalence of diabetes mellitus type 2, with the most dramatic increases seen in people in their 30s. Also contributing to this increase is a sedentary lifestyle, the advancing age of the United States population, and improved methods of screening and diagnosing diabetes. It is estimated that 18 million persons in the U.S. now have diabetes, most of them having type 2. It is no wonder many healthcare professionals refer to diabetes type 2 as an epidemic. In general, type 2 diabetes is due to different factors than type 1. The dysfunction in glucose regulation is due to the combined effects of decreased insulin production by the beta cells of the pancreas and insulin resistance by the body's tissues. There are two theories about how these problems develop. One is that a defect in beta cells causes the pancreas to secrete less insulin, resulting in hyperglycemia or high blood glucose levels. Over time, the ongoing hyperglycemia causes tissues in the muscles and liver 